Well, it's official. The spot gold consolidation that began in September is over. And it finished with a bang. Up 24.30 on spot gold on Friday and 16.40 on Monday. Now that's a breakout. We're going to take a look at the graphs technically and hopefully we'll all learn a lot. All that and more coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service gold and silver dealer specializing, well, number one, everything we do here is physical form that you take possession of, and but we really specialize in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive, frankly, the crisis that has already begun. So today, I know a lot has been happening in the market, actually just in the metals market, it seems. Even though there was an attack by the U.S. government to Iran and all the chaos that's ensuing there, which we're going to talk about on Thursday, what's really happened in the metals market? This is the long-term graph on spot gold. And you've seen it before, but remember when we talked about that, that gap, remember when it closed at a higher level and it opened on a lower level, that means that the price did not go through that level and it created a gap. At some point, I've told you this many times, but at some point that gap must be filled. We started to fill it and came to, we began to fill it back in September, and then we've had some consolidation. Well, frankly, that's over. But look at this beautiful cup. The reason why this pattern is so significant is because it's an accumulation pattern that happens over a period of time. If you look at the patterns on the stock market or the real estate market, that's a V. It's not a cup. And that is really an indication that somebody's in there pushing those prices up rather than a nice slow accumulation by the guys that know what's really going on, which is exactly what we have, frankly, in both spot gold as well as spot silver, which we're going to look at in just a minute. But over the last couple of days, as I said, that consolidation is completed. So this is the same graph, but I wanted you to be able to see that gap and how that gap has been really filled. And with what's happened in the markets over the last couple of days, boom, we have breakout. Now, the next level of resistance that I see for spot gold is that 1800 number. And frankly, it could get there pretty quickly. You know, timing is always the biggest challenge of any technician, so I can't necessarily tell you exactly when something's going to happen, but I can tell you what is the next most likely outcome. Once we break above that 1800, the only thing that's left is that 1900 price level that was created or hit back in 2011. When we break above that, well, I'll, I'll show you on this. This is 2004. This is where the last cup formation broke out and you can see the run that ensued. And we are not even talking about any kind of, of, of catastrophe happening or the, the official reset happening. We are simply talking about the spot market and the technicals. And this, as you guys know, this cup formation is a pattern that I want you to be really familiar with because that's going to help us determine when it's time to take our holdings from gold and shift into those other income producing assets when they are creating that cup formation. Let's take a look at silver now because while we are seeing some similar behavior it's not exactly the same as gold 
You are seeing the cup formation, but it's much earlier in the conclusion. And I would say, let me show you this. I would say that, well, I do know silver and gold both bottomed back in 2016. So if you guys are waiting to build your positions in either physical gold or physical silver, get it done. What in the world are you waiting for? Spot gold will get more expensive from here because of that breakout. But even in spot silver, you are still buying it somewhere near a low, which is really the best time to be buying. You need both, you need a combination of the two. But let me show you what we're dealing with here in silver because it still has to go to the resistance level that is just a little bit shy of 20 bucks. So, and where did it close? Well, this was yesterday. I think it went up a little bit today, but it closed at $18.18. .18. Come on. For those that, that don't feel like they have enough wealth for gold, though you can buy smaller fractional coins. So if you come in, you know, I mean, our minimum here is 500 bucks. If you come in with 500, you can do a little bit of gold and you can do a little bit of silver. And it makes sense because frankly, you need both. But both of them are bargains because none of this actually reflects the true fundamental value of an ounce of gold or silver. The fundamental value matters because when the when all confidence is lost and the governments are ready to convert that fiat money, so in this country we're talking about dollars, and to reset the whole system, they do it against gold. And that's when you will see gold express to somewhere near its true value. Keep in mind, the most important function for gold is to hold its value over time. And certainly it's proven that it's done that for the last five, 6,000 years. And with what we're dealing with now, I mean, you know, people ask me all the time, when? When is this going to happen? It's happening. It's happening in the panic from the central banks and the Federal Reserve and the repo markets. It's happening in the Middle East. I mean, we're going to talk about, uh, about Iran and Iraq much more on Thursday, but they are a huge threat, not from a military standpoint, but from a cyber standpoint. That makes having money, having real wealth, completely outside of the system, tangible, in your hands. You hold it, you own it, you can use it. And even some cash, don't forget cash, even though it's losing its purchasing power value, you still need cash because that's what people are going to recognize at first. If you haven't begun to build your, your position, get it done. If you have begun, get as much finished and come to conclusion as you can. I can tell you for a fact, I personally got more today. So, you know, I don't really care that it's breakout. I'm not going to wait for any pullbacks. That's silly. It is not, it can happen. Anything can happen. That's not something I control. But it is not very likely based upon all of this technical data that we've been talking about. I also did want to point out in the um, silver, spot silver, that there is a gap here um, somewhere above close to 25 bucks an ounce. So you'll see silver, spot silver move up. It'll test this resistance. We'll see if it can break out. But whether it does or whether it doesn't, you can see the cup. The cup should be really clear to you. This is when you want to position in. Looking at it just on a much shorter basis, here's spot gold. See that 2430 and that 16? By the way, can you see the skinny line up here? Well, that is the intraday. In other words, you know, you've got the open first thing in the morning and you've got the close at the end of the night and everything between that is intraday. So intraday, spot gold hit 1590. 
What are you waiting for? Right now, I think it's somewhere, obviously I'm not looking at it, but I think it's somewhere around 1577. It's still a bargain, even at 1590, even much higher than that. But if you can do it now, do it. You know I never really push this hard, but I'm telling you, I do not like what's happening that I'm seeing, not just in the Middle East, but that's one piece that's exploding. What scares me the most about them is the cyber part of it, which we're gonna talk about. This is most likely to be somewhere near the cheapest you're gonna be able to buy it. If you have the ability to do so, get it done. Spot silver, as you can see, same kind of time frame. And remember, I did this back to September because that's when the repo market started falling apart. And that's when the Fed started. It's not a big surprise that you saw a decline in the pricing because the Federal Reserve started pumping in all that new money into the system because the money markets froze. They froze. Not something that might happen, but actually something that did happen and they're panicked. So yeah, rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. We don't want you to know that. We just want you to believe the market new highs. We're gonna talk about that too. And I put together this relative performance chart. Now I showed you this chart recently, but I misspoke and I wanted to correct that. And then I'm gonna show you the actual one because of the one that I showed you where I said that gold had outperformed over the whole year. The interesting thing is I pulled this from stockcharts.com. So anybody can go in there. They have, they have paid subscription, but they also have uh, free services. And I, when I created the chart, look, I was looking at the number of days. So I went back 366 days in this graph, but I noticed when I was pulling together another one for today, that um, this is a little off. This is from July 24th of 2018 until um, I just redid it again till yesterday. So I didn't want to I didn't want to misspeak and give you guys information that was inaccurate. I did, however, I'm pulling up this long-term relative performance chart. So this is how uh, spot gold spot silver, spot oil, the Dow, and the 10-year note price, not yield, but price, how this has performed since, wow, Y2K was coming up back in July of 99. And, the, and I color-coded the spot gold, silver, oil, Dow, and treasury. And you can see spot gold has outperformed by a very wide margin all of those other intangible assets because that's what they are. So that's it for today. Uh, next week, do we have time for questions? There were no questions. There were no questions. Okay. Well, I thought this would be a pretty simple one. But if you do have any questions or you think of anything, just send them to questions at itmtrading.com and we'll, we're, we're gonna do Q&A tomorrow. I just thought that you would probably wanna see what was happening in the spot gold and silver markets today. So I kinda moved that up. Uh, I also did, it was a really fun interview with Eric over at Tradcat Night. So just stay tuned to our social media for when that posts. But boy, did we cover a lot of topics from, from the repo market to prepping. So it was a really fun interview, and I think you'll really get a lot out of it. If you have any questions, again, itmtrading.com. And don't forget to visit our blog where I write and also all the images as well as the links are posted. And that's itmtrading.com forward slash blog. This will also be posted on Brighteon. And uh, if you want to talk to any of our strategy specialists, just click that Calendly link below to schedule an appointment. And if you're working with them, you're working with me anyway, because if you're talking about the strategy, you would be executing the same strategy that I am, just tweaked for your specific goals, needs, and circumstances. If that time isn't available, give us a call, 888-696-4653, and we'll set up an appointment for you. 
So that's it for today. Until tomorrow, keep in mind, financial shields are made of physical gold and silver. And until then, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.